In this video, I'm going to show you how to animate your text using markers instead of keyframes. This technique works with text animators, so if you're not familiar with it, you'll learn a little bit about that as well. If you like the content you're seeing, check out the description below to see how you can help keep this channel alive. Okay, there's a lot to get through, so let's dive right in. Okay, so we just have some text right here and we are going to animate this using markers instead of keyframes. And as I mentioned, this technique works with text animators. So that's what we'll be using instead of our position transform property. Okay, so let's open up this text layer and just go to our text drop down right here and click on the animate button and we're gonna add in a position text animator. I also wanna add in a few more things. So now we can click on add so that way it will drop these other properties inside of our animator one and we're going to add in opacity, and then I want to add in a blur. Rename our animator one to N. Okay, so if you're not familiar with text animators, I do have a lot of other tutorials that teach more in-depth ways of using them. For our purposes, I'll go over a very general way to use them. So these values here are going to be the values that start your animation. And what I mean by that is, see our opacity is set to 100. If we put it down to zero, that's the beginning of the animation. Same thing with our blur. I'm going to set that to say like 50. That's the beginning of our animation. And um, I'm going to change that back for now. And with our position, I want to come in from the right. So again, this is where the animation begins. Okay, so in order to animate these with markers, first let's animate them with keyframes so I can show you the difference. Okay, so to animate this, we're going to use our offset. So let's open up our range selector and we're going to go right here to offset, set our value to 100% and then put a keyframe, and now if we hold down Shift, Option, Right Arrow, it will move that keyframe over by 20 frames if we do it twice. So that's gonna make it jump 20 frames. Again, that's Shift, Option, Right Arrow. If we just did Option, Right Arrow, it would move it over one frame at a time. So a very handy shortcut there, Shift, Option, Right Arrow, one, two times. Now we want our starting percentage to be negative 100%. Now this range of negative 100% to 100%, only works with certain shapes within our text animator. If you have it set to square, your range is going to be 0 to 100 instead of negative 100 to 100. Since this isn't really a text animator tutorial, I'm going to kind of just give you some values and we'll go with that. Again, if you want to learn more about text animators, check out some of my other tutorials. So we're going to set this to ramp up. Ease low is 100%. Ease low is like ease in. Ease high is like ease out. So we want this to ease in. And so I said I wanted the position to come in from the right. So a positive X value will make it come in from the right. Negative X value makes it come in from the left. Okay. And same thing with our Y value. If we go a positive direction, it comes in from the bottom. Negative comes in from the top. So for now, we're just going to go 400 pixels to the right. Set our opacity at 0% and our blur at 50. And again, these are the beginning values of our animation. Okay. So now if we watch it play back we can see how it comes in like this. And notice it's coming in by character. That can be set using this based on right here. I'm gonna change this to lines just to keep things simple. So it comes in just like that, okay? And now I want this to animate out in the same way. So let's close all this up. I'm gonna select our in text animator, duplicate that and change it to out. Now if we open this back up, we can take our keyframes move them down to where we want it to animate out. And then the only change we need to make is go into advanced, change our shape from ramp up to ramp down. So now this will go back out in the same direction. So that's a very simple text animator animation. Now you may be wondering, why would you use this instead of your transform properties? Well, text animators give you a lot more control. So if we go up to our in animation right here and open up our range selector, we can change our based on lines to based on words, for example, and see so it comes in one word at a time. We can also change our direction. So maybe we'll change this to negative 400 and it will go out like that. Okay, so now how do we animate this using markers? Select a layer, hit U to bring up our keyframes. I'm gonna just get rid of all of our keyframes. Okay, so instead of keyframes, let's go in and add a marker. So I'm gonna go about to 20 frames, put a marker, go to the end, and this is all adjustable. So it doesn't have to be exact right now. And let's rename these markers. So I'm gonna double click on my first one. Let's call this N. Double click on the second one and we'll call that one out. Okay, so now this is gonna include an expression. So let's open up our text right here. And again, we're gonna be focused on our offset. So I have this code and it's gonna be in the description below. Option, click on offset and I'm gonna paste that. I'm just gonna open this up really quick and we'll kind of 
run through what some of this means. This expression is going to be based on our endpoint right here, and it's going to start at negative 100%. Remember, our beginning animation is negative 100%, and it's going to use this marker right here to let our text know basically how long it should take to animate in. Then we have a math expression here, and we want to add in some easing. That's what this expression does. And then this just kind of ties up the rest of this expression here, and then we're going to end with a linear expression. So not a lot of detail as far as what all this coding means, just the basic explanation of what we're doing here. So I'm going to close that up, and if we scrub through, we can see how it's animating in with no keyframes. As we move this marker around, we can see that it's affecting how long it takes this text to animate in. So the more distance between your endpoint and this, the slower it's going to come in. So we can spread this out like this, and it'll take quite a while to come in. Or if you want it to come in really quick, move it closer to your endpoint like that. Okay? And we have a similar expression that's going to be for our out animation. Go into our out text animator and again on our offset option click on offset and paste that right in there we open this up we see it's very similar to our in animation we have our out point so it's going to be measuring from this out point to this marker okay so same concept as our animation in so wherever you move this marker it's going to control the speed of it so now you may be saying why go through all of that when i can just add in a couple of keyframes well there may be a few reasons i create templates and a lot of times there are a lot of keyframes in those templates. By animating your text with markers, you eliminate the need to even open up this layer at all. So I could have 20 layers and never have to open it up or mess with keyframes. All I have to do is move these markers around. The other thing is you can see this as an animation preset. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So if we select in and out, go to animation, save animation preset. Now, I am in uh, After Effects 2024, so when you go to your documents, Adobe 2024 user presets, I'm just going to drop it in this general area here because I've got a lot of other presets, but I want to make it easy to locate. So I'm going to say text animator underscore marker, and you can name this whatever you'd like. Click save. Let that save. Now we'll go to our effects and presets. We can open up our user presets, and we see it's right here, text animator marker. So let's get rid of our text animators there and if we just double click we can see that it's going to add them right back in so all you have to do in the future is create some text add in a couple of markers and then drop these in there let's do it from the beginning so we'll say this is a cool expression and i'm just going to control double tap my pan behind tool to center my anchor point and then let's just align this right up so this has no text animators on it it's clean text so now let's add in a marker here and a marker here. You don't have to necessarily name it. If you're in a hurry, just pop it in there, especially if you know what you're using it for. Double click and we can see that we have our text animators in there and it works. So quick way to adjust whether or not you're animating using words, lines, or characters is to select your layer, go up to your finder right here, type in based for based on. So now you can quickly change this. Say you want this to be based on lines. Now it animates in using lines. Say you want to change the direction. Well, if you go up to your finder and type comma, space, POS for position, now we have our based on and our position in case you want to change some of that up. So maybe you want to come in, say, from the left, which would be a negative X value. So come in from the left, and maybe you want to go out to the right this time. So we'll say 400, but you don't like the way it looks with words going out like that. So maybe you want to change this to lines and maybe you want to change this, say, to characters. So by using a comma and adding more search terms in your finder bar, it gives you the ability to search for more than one property at a time. So say, I don't like the way that comes in, so I'm going to make this maybe coming in from the right. So it comes in by characters from the right, goes out to the right using lines. Let's search for one more thing, so I'm going to put comma and if you type in shape this will bring up our shapes our ramp up and our ramp down so say what if for example you want to make this come in by words but you want it to come in from the left so we'll change this to negative 400 but you don't like it coming in with this being the first word you want it to come in with expression being the first word well what you can do is change your shape from ramp up to ramp down now if you do that you do have to change your offset values. And that's really easy to do. So I'm going to type comma, 
off for offset. So now we have our advanced, we have our position, we have our shape, and we have our offset. Just go in here and change all of your values, flip them to the negative. So negative 100 becomes 100, 100 becomes negative, and you're gonna do this three times just like that. So all of these 100 values, make them the opposite of what they were. So now just that quickly, if you watch it play back, expression comes in first.